Good morning. I'm a girl in my 20s just trying to figure life out. <laughs> You're watching Jack from Queen. Good morning, everybody. It is a sunny day here in Cleveland, Ohio. Today is Tuesday. This will probably come out next Monday. I'm really getting into vlogging ahead of time and like scheduling release. It's so it's so much more fun that way, feeling like my work is already done. So exciting. Anyway, I want to talk about an issue. And this is an issue that is heavy on my heart as somebody who just turned 23 last week. Happy birthday. Oh my god, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for the birthday wishes. Thank you. So this is just something that's really important to me. Is the urban tribe overrated? So the urban tribe is just somebody in their, you know, mid-20s who is done with their higher education, has probably finished college, probably starting their career, and is deciding to live with a bunch of like-minded individuals who are also probably in their mid-20s instead of raising a family and starting a family early in their mid-20s. As you know, societally, that's what people used to do is finish school and get married and have babies. <laughs> and things are changing and that is not really the social norm anymore. I read this book last year. This book is called um, The Defining Decade and it's by, I think her name is Meg Joyce. She's a PhD in psychology. She's great and she basically is a therapist to a bunch of people in their uh, in their 20s. And so the defining decade is about using your 20s to the best of your ability to further your life in the long run. She talks about relationships, she talks about finding jobs, and she kind of talks about using your brain and your body to your best advantage in order to get you farthest in life. While this is a really good read, one of the points that kept coming up was that the urban tribe is overrated. I I feel like we need to myth bust that fact. Before I myth, before we <laughs> Before we myth bust that fact, I was supposed to be at the gym right now, and instead I'm drinking a coffee and filming a YouTube video about something that's just on my mind. So, cheers to that. We're in our 20s, folks. And I'm also wearing my emotional support hoodie. If you don't have an emotional support hoodie, what are you doing? What are you doing? The point in her book, in one of the chapters, is about how the urban tribe is overrated because while you're spending all this time with people who are like-minded, and like-minded meaning when you're in your 20s, you're probably working your career, you're probably, you know, splitting rent with two or three or maybe four individuals and paying a very low price, you're not really starting a mortgage, you're not really worried about, like, a whole lot of progression. You're just kind of getting comfortable in your career. That's the only thing you're really working on and you're probably spending a lot of Friday and Saturday nights going out with your friends. And a lot of us have kind of um, idealized that scenario. As much as I get that like one day we're gonna look back and like those will be the days, the good old days, you know. Um, do we really want children is really the question we have to answer. And for women especially, the peak time to have children is in your early 20s, unfortunately, and your fertility, hi Piper, your fertility kind of declines every five years um, once you hit 20, and basically by the time you're 35, it's very difficult to conceive. Women typically now are like graduating from school, figuring out what their careers are going to be, getting established in their career, starting to move up a bit, getting comfortable financially, and then finding a partner that they want to stay with for a long time and then decide if they want children. And a lot of the time, that is not in their early 20s. I definitely get that not everybody wants to conceive naturally anyway, especially for people who end up in long-term relationships that aren't just heterosexual relationships, and you'll probably have to go about conceiving in another way or adopting, which is an awesome alternative. I think adoption is a great choice because there are so many kids on this earth who don't have homes, but that's a story for another day. It shouldn't be $12,000 to adopt a child. Capitalism. It's just very interesting to me because I read an article uh, this week about how Marriage doesn't typically benefit women as much as it benefits men, and again, this is assuming a heterosexual relationship. A lot of the time, it ends up with a woman who is resentful, bitter, taking care of children, at least a child, children, a man, a household, and her career probably hasn't moved an inch, while the man in 5, 10, or 15 years of being married has probably moved his career up a significant amount or is at least comfortable where he is. He's probably just enjoying life and very content with what this is. You know, about 50% of marriages end in divorce and yada yada. However, <clears throat> think about how many of those divorces are initiated by women. And when they are initiated by men, it's probably because of men cheating. I don't have the stats, folks. I'm just speaking facts. It's just interesting to me how this idea that marriage and children is the solution and is everything that women are taught and raised to want really doesn't result in a lot of us ending up happy. What is happiness to us? It really, 
it's hard because you're in your early 20s, somebody like me or you watching probably right now, and you really don't know what you want, right? You don't really know if you want to be friends with the people you're friends with right now forever and if you want to settle down and have children right now forever. And a lot of the time it kind of just happens and it's not something we choose. And that's something that's discussed in The Defining Decade as well, is about how who you end up with is something that you choose, the type of partner that you get is something that you choose, and... Um, I totally agree with her in that aspect. You can definitely figure out what kind of person you want to marry and then go for it. And that should take some of the hard part out of it, right? That should take the ending up in a marriage where you're not happy out of it. But it's just such a risk. Like, you really never know what's going to happen in however many years. So I'm just saying, like, let's not rush everything. Let's not rush marriage and children. Let's just do life. And if that ends up with you in an urban tribe until you're 32 and you're still having a great time with your roommates, do it. Literally just live your life. There is no timeline. If you can't end up having kids, you can't end up having kids. And that's a bridge you'll cross when you get there. But I hope when you look back, you don't regret your 20s. And you're watching Jack from Klee. So I'm just saying... I think getting married in your early 20s is overrated. That's it. That wraps up the whole thing. Cheers. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching. I really enjoyed making this video. Thank you for letting me rant about the things that are happening in my brain on a Tuesday morning. I love you all so much. Love you long time. Bye. Take care.